good morning. I have no idea whether you are getting music or not there. Um, I couldn't hear anything, and uh, there, there are ways of uh, doing it. However, I'll tell you what I might do is here. Uh, what I might do is might turn up my own sound, and then I can hear it. Uh, you probably heard me burbling over the music there. I was trying hard to, to determine whether, in fact, uh, we've got any music going out. I think we have. Well, good morning. It's uh, Monday, the 4th of March. My goodness me, February is gone already. Here we are into the final month of the first quarter of the year, and it was only New Year's Day yesterday. Oh, where does the time go? Anyway, uh, this is Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio, broadcasting from the south coast of Lewis. We don't have much of an audience at the moment, but we're being patient, we're building, we're getting our act together so that uh, we can become a good voice on radio, as indeed we are on television. Um, so see if you can find us. We go out on Facebook. Um, hopefully soon we'll have a little icon that uh, we can put up on a, a website uh, or on a page so that all you've got to do is to tap and you can, you can get to us. Um, the, the people at Spreaker who host this uh, radio service have got all sorts of little gizmos which we haven't had really time to look at because uh, we've been developing the television, but we've got radio going, and here, here it is, um, and uh, we try hard to shout as loud as we possibly can uh, to keep everybody uh, alert to what's going on in the community. What's the community? Well, we're based in Lewis, which is a, a town of about 17,000, a district of about 100,000. Um, that, that is the electoral district in uh, 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 East Sussex I had to think for a moment uh, you have to, uh, and uh, we, we try hard to look after the interests of people from uh, um, Battle uh, to the edge of Brighton, uh, Falmer where the football stadium is for um, Brighton and Hove Albion uh, where the Sussex University campus is, it's a delightful little village but right on the edge it's got these two rather important institutions uh, so we're very cognizant of trying to look after them as well as uh, for battle, where the original battle took place. Um, and the uh, when I say the original battle of uh, 1066, uh, the Battle of Hastings as it's known as, but it actually took place at battle. And there is an abbey there, um, partly destroyed by that vandal Henry VIII, uh, which is on the site of the battle and built by um, uh, William the Conqueror. So that's our, that's our remit, as it were, uh, and in between, I have to say, between Battle and Brighton, there are some delightful towns and communities, most of them historic, and uh, uh, most of them bearing the scars of a thousand years of, of warfare and trauma and, and drama, including our own of Lewis, where if you go onto the web, you should be able to find a program called... Uh, the Bloody Past of a Tiny Town, which is a, a program uh, that I hosted about uh, some of the naughty things that have happened on Lewis High Street, and more things, naughty things have happened on Lewis High Street than most other high streets put together around the country. Uh, so, anyway, th try that television program if, if you can, and you'll know what I'm talking about. But here I am, in Lewis itself, broadcasting on... Rouser Radio. Rouser, by the way, R-O-W-S-E-R, -E even though I sometimes even misspell it, is the local word for a uh, firework banger. And Lewis is famous for its bonfire night on November the 5th, the biggest celebration anywhere in the world. And uh, it, it goes on year after year after year. It uh, uh, attracts all sorts of people. It's controversial because some people say, no, we do it for the town, we do it for tradition. Um, and we don't want people coming in. You know, others point out is, uh, well, those people who, who swell the town to watch this spectacle bring in a lot of money, and that's what pays for the next year's fireworks. Uh, but anyway, let's not get involved in that sort of uh, controversy right now because there is plenty going on around uh, that is controversial. Uh, watch out this morning if you're travelling. 
The uh, looking out of the window, it 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 just seemed to be all right. Uh, the, the the storm is abating, as the experts said it would around about six o'clock, uh, which was uh, ten minutes ago. Actually, it was uh, eight, eight minutes ago. <laughs> he said, "Not that I think the, the the storm is going to be that precise, uh, but all in all, I think that." Uh, we had a pretty rough night of it. Uh, winds in some places were up to 90 miles an hour. Uh, it is storm uh, uh, Freya, I think. Freya. I don't know how that, uh, whether I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it has dumped up to six inches of snow in various places. Those people who are young enough uh, to um, get, do it in centimeters, I couldn't possibly convert. Let me just say that six inches of snow to us oldies is that's a fair amount of snow. Six inches is plenty, thank you. So it's dumped that on particularly high ground, uh, but but fairly widespread, particularly across the north and the west of the country. So here we uh, here we go uh, again, watching for trees. Certainly, there were some that came down at Barkham, and I would imagine there are others across the county, making travel difficult this morning. There were some roads flooded, uh, so watch for those. Generally speaking. Uh, we uh, normally don't get the brunt of these storms, but we did last night. It was really, really very noisy, and uh, certainly it woke me. I got up in the middle of the night and started to do some work. I, I, I couldn't sleep. Uh, watch out this morning and just check with the trains. Whether, in fact, we had problems here in Lewis or not with the trains, you never know what's going to happen down the line if you're going to places like London or Portsmouth or whatever. So do double-check on your travel arrangements this morning and even check the no reports of, uh, of planes being held back at the moment at the airports but do check if you're traveling by air uh, who knows so uh, there, there we go that's uh, that was overnight um it's going to be fairly damp across east sussex this week with wednesday uh, anticipated that it's going to rain just about all day and pretty heavily at that uh, so we were in for a bit, bit of winter after that very balmy uh, few days that we had it's it almost uh, like, like an Indian summer uh, uh, for the, what, parts of February. I think it's one of the warmest Februarys that we ever had. Well, now it's going to come back with the vengeance, which it did last night. So watch out for the weather. Uh, turning to other things that have happened, uh, one, stabbings again in London and in Manchester. And a, a report last week that Birmingham has outstripped London, uh, with a record that is unenviable, but that is that there is more knife crime in Birmingham than there is in London now, and we've been watching carefully as knife crime has escalated in London, and it would have seen the authorities uh, haven't uh, had much dent in in stopping it. Uh, Cressida Dick, as uh, the the, uh, uh, chief constable of the Met, has uh, said that she's uh, paying great attention to it, uh, but it seems to be getting out of hand and spreading. And while we're relatively free in Sussex, uh, there are signs of, uh, of of things beginning to break out. We don't want self-prophecy. I'm not going to say that it's, it's, it's going to increase here. But in fact, the police have been, given their due, they have been fairly effective in this, keeping a, a, us calm in this part of the world. So let's put our support behind them and make sure that they continue to do so. Not least of which is, don't designate places like Lewis as, as relatively crime-free and move the coppers out. <laughs> uh, criminals aren't daft. They know when there's a vacuum, and they'll move in. So um, a message or a plea to the chief constable, let's keep a cap on it that you have already. Well done, you. Oh, dear, 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 dear. I think about playing a bit of music now, don't you think? You know, so, oh. Um, well, it's a nice trilly one, just to get us going. Uh, White River. I've played this before, and I rather like it.
pretty, isn't it? White River. Uh, let's hope there aren't too many white rivers around this morning that weren't there before. Uh, the roads don't turn into canals. Pretty stormy night. Anyway, the uh, the Battle of the Oranges is in Ivrea in northern Italy. Apparently there's a 12th century evil lord who uh, was having his way with the local maidens and one resisted and cut off his head and it triggered a peasant's revolt and <laughs> they, they got the only thing that they could as a weapon and that, <laughs> that was the local oranges. Nowadays, of course, they don't waste food. Up to a million oranges are thrown in this particular spectacle and, and ceremony. Uh, it, but they are oranges which are uh, doomed to be dumped. So instead they get thrown in a, the Battle of the Oranges in which one group defend the castle, Ivrea Castle, uh, and uh, the, the others uh, attack it, trying hard to, uh, to take the castle by orange storm. And there are judges who, at the end of three days, this goes on for three days, by the way, end of three days, uh, d- decide who are the winners. It, not being battered with oranges is a pretty nasty thing, I would have thought. I'd never been battered with an orange before, but uh, if you're a spectator, if you go to watch this, um, you're given a red hat so that the combatants know uh, uh, not to throw oranges at you. But, of course, there's bound to be some who will peer around a corner to see what's going on, and I doubt they get an orange <laughs> fully in the face. Um, there we are, Battle of Oranges in Ivrea, in northern Italy. Ivrea, sorry, not Ivrea. Ivrea uh, in, in northern Italy. Um, remember that locally we have a, a referendum on the 7th, so today is Monday the 4th, Tuesday the 5th, Wednesday the 6th, Thursday the 7th, and that is a referendum on the Lewis Neighbourhood Plan. Now, I've seen various comments in the uh, Facebook Groups of people saying, you know, this is hundreds of pages, am I expected to wade through it? I doubt it. Anybody, even the, uh, <laughs> the councillors, are going to wade through every last page.